Hi, good morning guys. I prepared these slides for your final revision on Pectiology for this semester and I like to point out some important points on Pectiology. So let's start with some basics of Pectiology. This slide is from lecture 3 and slide number 27. Uh, bacteria shape, size and their appendages. This diagram, you will see the cell wall of grand positive bacteria. There are a few components you need to remember. 90% of cell wall is composed of peptidoglycan and the rest is cell membrane. The protein on the top left are surface proteins and there are two types of acids in this cell wall. Dequic acid comes from peptidoglycan. Here's a dequic acid. And lipodequic acid comes from cytoplasmic membrane. So let's move on to another type of cell wall. This slide shows you the cartoon of cell wall of the grand negative bacteria. It has outer membrane thin layer of peptidoglycan and cytoplasmic membrane. The outer layer is again composed of polysaccharides, lipid A and proteins. There are porins here for transport of small molecules. So you should be able to label these diagrams for both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria cells. This is one of the questions from your in-course assessment. You have learned all these type of calculations and other modules. This is sort of must know topic and you must be able to solve these problems. So please practice it. Let's move on to another one. This slide is from lecture 5, Replicate and Divide. The slide number is from 14. Yeah. You can check it in the handout and this slide shows you the typical growth curve of the bacterial population. There are four phases of microbial growth cycle you need to remember. Leg phase, exponential phase, stationary phase and death phase, right? So you should be able to explain what are these phases mean. In the leg phase, cells adjust to new conditions then followed by optimal growth with regular doubling in cell numbers that is called exponential phase then it's this phase is followed by nutrient depletion or accumulation of toxic metabolized condition that will lead to bacterial cell growth limitation finally the phase it reached to the death phase in this condition, you will see gradual loss of viability of these cells. Next condition you need to remember is different classes of organisms based on different environmental factors. For example, in temperature, because of the different temperature, you should be able to identify different classes. For example, Psychrophil, mesophil, thermophil, and hyperthermophils. Right? For example, psychrophils are the organisms that are capable of growth and reproduction in low temperature ranges from minus 20 to plus 10 degrees Celsius and so on. Then mesophils will be the organisms that can grow the best in the moderate temperature neither too hot or neither too cold, with an optimum growth ranges from 20 to 45 degrees Celsius and so on. So you should be able to define all these terminology. Right? And move on to another condition, that is effect of salinity on growth and other environmental factors that affect it on the growth. So here you can see different classes 
based on these environmental factors. For example, based because of different acidity and alkalinity, you can identify or you can make a different classes, for example, acidophil, neutrophils, and alkaline fields. Because of the different osmotic effects, you will see halophils, extreme of extreme halophils, halotolerant, and osmophils. And the, the last one will be um, oxygen. Because of a different oxygen level, you will have aerobes and anaerobes. Aerobes are the organism that are able to live and reproduce only in the presence of free oxygen. Anaerobes are the one that um, the organisms that do not require oxygen for growth. So you should be able to define different classes of organisms. All right, let's move on to the next slide. So this slide is from lecture eight, uh, slide number 16. So lecture eight covers microbiome. Here, what you need to remember is the different microbiota on the skin. The highest number of the bacteria, uh, the bacteria on the skin is the actinobacteria, and they are gram-positive. In terms of gram-negative, proteobacteria are the most common in on, on the type on the skin. Another slide is also from lecture 8, slide number 19. In this, this slide shows you the different organisms present in human colon. The most common bacteria group you can find in colon is Firmicutes. That's about 64% here. Second most common type of bacteria are the one here, you can see in the yellow color, Bacteroides, right? Next slide, I'm going to show you from uh, slides from lecture nine. So here um, in lecture nine, host interactions, this slide is slide number 29. What you need to know in this lecture uh, nine is a difference, be differences between exotoxin and endotoxins. So exotoxins are the one that talk, that these are the toxins that are secreted by bacteria. An exotoxin can cause damage to the host by destroying cells or disrupting the normal cellular metabolism. And these are the different types of exotoxins endotoxins and neurotoxins. So these are the ones that can cause damage or disrupt the normal cellular metabolism. Endotoxins are heat-stable lipopolysaccharide and protein complexes which form the structural components of cell wall of gram-negative bacteria. So that's, these are the ones liberated only on the cell lysis or the death of the bacteria. All right, so let's move on to the next lecture. This is from lecture 10, Symptoms and Culprits. So this slide is slide number 20. Here, in this slide, you need to know the causal organism and the name of the diseases. For example, impetigo, is caused by both Streptococcus pyogenes and Staphylococcus aureus, whereas in scarlet fever is caused by S pyogenes, and Boise is caused by Staph aureus. This slide shows you the Streptococcus organism and the site of infection. Streptococcus are the grand positive cocci. It grows in chains. It, the site of infections will be throat, middle ear, mammary glands, skin, and lungs. The most important disease caused by Streptococcus is called 
scarlet fever. Just now, I have explained you. This is the last slide. You need to know. Here in this slide, here is a list of different Escherichia coli. UPEC or Europathogenic Escherichia coli, EHEC or Enterohemorrhagic Escherichia coli. What you need to know is you have to remember all these short forms and you should be able to write the long forms of Escherichia coli. Alright, I hope it helps you to a certain extent. Right? Uh, make sure you study well. Thank you.